For the first time in three weeks, the Pequa Indians are playing a team not named Stubbins. After knocking off the other Indians twice, Pequa moves on to the second round of the Division II Region 8 playoffs here in the OHSAA. They're on the road at Trenton Edgewood. It's the Indians versus the Cougars live here on the Indian Nation Station. Hi again, everyone. I'm Tom Michaels. A.J. Ganger alongside. He's filling in for uh, Brian Gillespie and A.J. Uh, this match up here, this is a matchup, a rematch, actually, of last year's uh, regional semis. It really is, and you know, last year's regional semi game went the way of the Indians, 28 to 21. We've also played them one other time in 2001 in the regional quarterfinals, where we shut them out, 21 to zero. So this is the third meeting all time between Piqua and Edgewood, and it is happening again right here in the playoffs, Tom. Well, the Indians come in with a record of nine and two, seven and two they were in the Miami division of the MVL that placed them as second behind tip. Uh, last year, of course, this was a team that went 13 and one, perfect regular season. And uh, once again, they're taking on Edgewood. Edgewood comes in here with a 10 and one record and a five and zero record uh, in the SWOC. We've got the band downstairs for the Edgewood Cougars. They're about to play the national anthem and the Cougars alma mater. Strains of our national anthem is played by the Edgewood Marching Band. Happy to have you along, Tom Michaels. Along with A.J. Ganger here on the Indian Nation Station, speaking of Edgewood. Um, they, they run something which you don't see all that often anymore, the wing tee, but at least the Indians saw it last year when they beat them in the uh, quarterfinals of the, uh, I should say the semis of the regionals. And then they also saw a version of it earlier this year with Troy. So it's not like they haven't seen a wing tee. Yeah. Yeah, they definitely have seen a wing tee. And, you know, they have a great defensive coach in Bill Neese who has seen the wing tee for all of his 30 years of coaching at least once or twice during a regular season. So he knows how to stop that wing tee. As we take a look, the Indians... Well, hopefully we're going to have uh, one of the keys to the early part of the season back out there. Ryan Brown, he's the wide receiver. 
He'll wear number 84, and he's been laid up with injury here for some time. Earlier in the year, he started it off. His first four catches all went for touchdowns. Uh, and then, as I say, we haven't seen him on the field for a while because of the in injury situation. Uh, Brady Uhl coming in here. He's the fourth leading passer in terms of yardage with uh, 1,458 yards, 98 of 148. Now, his opposite number for Edgewood, you're just not going to see this guy being uh, much of a passer. Riley Brown, he has thrown 35 of 71, but last week in their win against Lima Sr., he only threw three times and completed one. Yeah, the Indians are definitely going to be seeing a heavy dose of senior fullback Tavion Crosby, 5'11", 210-pound uh, fullback for this Cougar offense. He's rushed for 1,316 yards on the year. He's averaging 7.3 yards a carry. He's got 20 touchdowns. They also got another fullback and senior Jake Valero, 5'9", 160 pounds. He has 799 rushes with seven touchdowns. They also got a great junior running back in Braden Sullivan. He's got 783 yards, eight touchdowns, and obviously senior quarterback Riley Brown. He's only thrown for 792 yards, nine touchdowns, two interceptions, but he has thrown no more than five times in any of the last five games for Edgewood. Well, Edgewood didn't get off to a great start this year. Uh, they played at Milford and lost 42 to six in their opener. But since then, they have now won 10 straight. As mentioned, last time out, Lima Senior, uh, 38 to six win there. They're in the SWOC that uh, technically only has six teams. So they play uh, uh, five times against league opponents and then they have to go out of league for the rest of their time. Um, also taking a look here, they've got one of the great names here for a football player in uh, Brick Barker. Uh, we're gonna see him on kickoff returns. We'll also see him on uh, putt returns. And he is uh, one of their leading defensive men out there. So the Indians coming in here, they had a 19 game regular season win streak snapped earlier this year by Xenia. And, of course, the Xenia Buccaneers wound up getting upended. They were the number two seed in the Region 8. They got upended by Little Miami, the 15th seed. And uh, Little Miami is playing Anderson tonight. And the winner of that game will play the winner of this game coming up next week at a neutral site. Yeah, I believe neutral site games will start in round number three. So hopefully the Indians get a big win here tonight. Maybe we can get a little bit closer to home. But either way, we're going to be playing one of those Cincinnati teams and two teams that we've had some uh, history with over the past couple years. The Anderson game, obviously, they came down to the wire um, in 2020. And then last year, we hosted Little Miami in the first round of the playoffs and blew them out. Um, so, you know, a big win here tonight will push us back into our back-to-back -back regional uh, semifinals uh, for the Pickwood Indians. For the Indians, they have scored 412 points while giving up just 75. Meanwhile, we see Edgewood with 377 points uh, for and against 150. So they uh, haven't shown quite as well on defense as the Pickwood Indians have. As far as the coaching matchup, of course, we've got the veteran Bill Neese, 31 years, a record of 230 and 109. Uh, he has led this particular program to both a Division II state championship that back in 2006 and 2000. Uh, they went to the state championship and wound up runner up there. Bill Neese, a Hall of Famer at Baldwin Wallace. He was part of that Division III national championship team uh, back in the late 70s, and he played for the legendary Lee Trussell, who not only was legendary in his own right, but the dad of uh, Mr. Trussell there at Ohio State. As we take a look now for Edgewood, Scott Clements. He's a 1994 grad of Edgewood, his 25th year of coaching, his 11th as the head coach here at Edgewood. So he uh, got his... Uh, Bachelor's degree at Wilmington College and a master's at Wright State. Uh, 
these are two legendary programs to be sure. Yeah, it really is. This is Piqua's 15th playoff appearance in the history of their program. Edgewood, this is their 16th. They have a 16 and 15 record, two regional titles, a state runner up back in 2003. They've also made the playoffs five of the last seven years. They also have 327 wins since becoming a program in 1970. Well, this is Kumler Field. It is actually at the junior high school, which is just down the road from the senior high school in, uh, in Trenton. As here come the Pico Indians out onto the field. They're wearing their white with the red numerals, the blue helmets and blue pants. Very rowdy crowd over there for our Indians. It's great to see all the people on the far side. Hopefully all those people that stayed home are watching the game live here on our YouTube channel. Absolutely. Uh, talking about this stadium here, it's uh, a very nice a facility and they made it even nicer this past summer because what you're looking at there is the the stadium turf kind of deal that's about 1.2 million dollars of surface out here that uh, they put down and it should make for uh, excellent running for either of these two teams right now waiting for the appearance of the Edgewood Cougars they have played, as you mentioned, I, th I, think you me I think you mentioned it a little bit earlier that these two teams have played three times. They've all been in the, uh, the playoffs. This will be the third time. Um, the first time would have been back about uh, 2000 and then uh, 2001. And then, of course, uh, the game last year, which was played at Wayne, and the Indians had to come back from down very late in that, uh, that particular ball game to yeah. be able to come away with a win. Yeah, it was a very competitive game. Obviously, Edgewood had to control the line of scrimmage most of the game. They run that wing to the offense. They're going to be able to control the clock, control the game, unless you get them off, get them off the field quick. Piqua wasn't able to do that sometimes, but a 70-yard punt by Jackson Tremblay really switched the momentum in that game last year. Absolutely, and we're taking a look right now. Myself, uh, Big old moon is up there shining down upon us as it's a beautiful night for football. And boy, am I glad since we are outside here yep. on top of the press box. It's giving us a good view as uh, we wait, we watch, and getting ready to come out with the American flag. It'll be the homestanding Cougars of Edgewood. They're in that uh, dark blue uniforms with the white numerals. This and is going to be a huge titanic struggle here tonight, Tom. I'm excited for this one. Oh, absolutely. And here comes Edgewood. And we are just about ready to go here. A reminder, our sponsors for the 22-23 season, Kathy Henney, Little Caesars, Teach Tech Productions, Buffalo Wings and Rings, Dick Lumpkin, this and that's Candy on Me, Harmony Systems, Crayx Corporation, Edison State, Dr. Littlejohn, Morris Comfort Systems, Atlanta Sportswear, 36 Skate Club, and Horan. The Indians won the coin toss. They deferred to the second half. And the Indians are going to be kicking off, going right to left, and that is going to go with the wind. Wind coming down there from our right as we see the flag blowing pretty much stiff straight out. So that could become a factor before this one is too much along the way. Happy to have you along here. Edgewood, a physical team. We Very should see Braden team. Sullivan as one of the men as a kickoff returner. Also, Rick Barker. And it'll be Jackson Trombley kicking off for the Indians. Hopefully this one goes in the end zone here, partner, and the Indians can back him up on a, a long field starting at the 25. Jackson Trombley, who has uh, spent most of his, his uh, career setting the football on kickoffs on through the end zone. 
just going to be kicking it off. The referee getting ready to put the ball there at the 40 yard line. He'll be kicking with the wind as we get things started. It's going to be real interesting to see how the defense comes out on this first possession. Can we get Edgewood off the field quickly here and get our offense on and score points? Kind of a low line drive and it is going to go on through the end zone. So they'll bring it out to the 20 yard line and that is where we are going to see Riley Brown take it over and they'll be running that wing tee we've been talking about. Number 34, Tavia Crosby is going to be their big back but you've also got Jake Valeria who will be out there, Braden Sullivan. They don't even list anybody among their uh, appreciable stats as a wide receiver. They do have one tight end that they might go to. Here's the run to the outside, Valerio. Valerio takes it up across the 30 yard line down to about the 33 before he is brought down. And it appeared Mickey Anderson, one of those who was able to take him down. They're gonna spot the ball at the 34 yard line and that's a first down and that's exactly what this team can do at you. Yeah. They'll just come out there and just keep grinding it on the ground. It's great blocking by the offensive line too to, to get that hole open and a great job by the running back to run outside. Man in motion right to left. Pass. They're gonna throw, which is unusual. Yeah. And as we can see, not necessarily successful at that sort of thing. Braden Sullivan was the intended target of Riley Brown. That'll bring up a second down and 10 here. Colton Booker out there on coverage for the Indians. Brown just sailed that one right over Sullivan's head. Indians all, need to step up here. All at the 34 yard line of Edgewood. They'll send one man wide to the left. We don't always see that with this team. Up the middle. They're gonna give it again to the back. And that's gonna be Tavian Crosby. A fullback, 5'11", 210 pound senior. He's rushed 180 times for 1,316 yards. It's a big third down here. The Indians, third and six. They need to get a big stop here, get off the, get their defense off the field, get their offense on the field. Let's see what they're going to do. It's that third and six, a wing T offense. They don't really pass that often. Yeah, the defense has come up big throughout so much of this season. Once again, pitch. they're going to pitch it back. Crosby tries to turn the yeah. corner. Crosby. He's short. Well, they're able to stop him, but they could have stopped him about three yards uh, further up. Anson Cox is the one that puts him down and it's going to be a fourth down coming up here and the punting unit going to come on the punter well let's see which one it's going to be it's going to be david rumpler they've Same had a couple Sim of guys that have uh, taken appreciable snaps back there the other being rick barker but this is rumpler sam smeezing did a great job on that third down play to slow down crosby force him to come up short almost blocked the punt there it's going to be taken there. Elijah Frazier going to be taken down very quickly. And coming up there to be able to take him down. That is Marion Stover. So the Indians are going to have the first chance to be able to uh, move the ball down. And they're going to have it. Looks like they're going to have it at their own 27-yard line. See if the nerves are calmed down for Kai. He's starting in the backfield tonight for the Indians. Ool on the give. Kai Warner picks up appreciable yardage. Gets across the 30, down to about the 32 yard line. He'll be taken to the turf. Bryson Robertson, the middle linebacker, six foot, 180 pound junior. That'll bring up a second and six on the pickup of four. You know, the you know, Edgewood can lull you to sleep with the run game. So can Piqua. They can just grind it out, pick up first downs as long as they get four or five yards of carry. They're gonna get the ball. Kai Water. Water is gonna be hog tied there. Only a couple yards, I think. It's still a third and manageable here for the Indians. It would be great to get a first down, keep this offense on the field. Evan Swartz is the man who puts him down on the turf. Linebacker, 6'2", 190-pounder. He's a senior, 
85 tackles so far this year. That make that 86. Ool looks over. Now he'll call the signals once again. Once again, the back Kai finding Warner. a hole. That's Kai Water. He's close Kai here, Tom. Warner will be close. And it's going to be short. He's going to be just short of that first down. They need to get right to the 37, and they're only at the 36 and a half. They're a half yard short, and they're bringing Jackson out. That's a big decision there because the Indians could have went for it on that fourth down. Yeah, but that's awfully uh, that's awfully deep yeah. toward their own territory. I think you want to get it a little bit closer there in midfield before you do that. Jackson Tremblay. Rick Barker is back deep for the Cougars. Good snap. Line drive. This one's going to take one, two, couple of bounces there. Ball picked up by Rick Barker. Tries to turn the corner. Goes back the other way, and he's going to lose ground because Mickey Anderson is right there. Mickey also Anderson. there. Mickey Anderson is a man possessed. Owen Schaller also there. So we're going to see the Edgewood Cougars, their second time with the ball. Neither team able to do anything with it on their first possessions. The ball at the 18-yard line. Working from the near hash mark. They'll give the ball once again. This is Sullivan. Sullivan tries to turn the corner, but not able to get much of anything there as right there, Colton Booker. Colton Booker able to take him down. Booker, the linebacker, 6'3", 205-pound senior. Colton Booker does a great job all season long at this linebacker position, not getting sucked in. He's always making plays for this Indians defense. Great to see him back out there again here tonight. This time they send their wide receiver out to the left side. And the back carry of the ball is Tavian Crosby. So far the Indians have been able to put the kibosh on any kind of a big run here by the Edgewood Cougars. It's a good thing. It's still a third and about five here for Edgewood. Another big third down for the Indians. They did give up one first down on that first drive. Yep. Ball setting it there just shy of the 24 yard line. This time, two backs. They'll give it to the back on the left. Ooh, flag down. It's going to be close. We do have a flag come in. It's going to be a hold against Edgewood. They did pick up that first down from the spot. Jake Valerio was the ball carrier. That's a huge penalty because now it's going to be third and nine, third and ten. And in a wing T offense, you don't have a lot of plays that can pick up ten yards all at once. Uh, I'll tell you what, this Edgewood team, they can do that. Yeah. Because uh, you take a look, David Crosby, Average is about 7.3 per carry. Yes. Braden Sullivan, 10.3. This Indians defense, though, they lock down running games all year long. Third down and 14. Riley Brown. They're just going to go up the middle with Crosby. Fumble. Crosby's not going to get uh, much of anything. Gets he did. it back beyond the original line of scrimmage. He did fumble that ball, but he was able to fall right back on it, but it's not going to matter because it's still going to be fourth and long. It's been a defensive struggle here in the early going. 6.07 left to go in the first period. Back to do the punting. David Rumpler once again. He averages this season over 36 yards per punt, standing back at his six. Not a very good punt. Flag it down. Is. Yep, there's going to be a flag down there. It's Rashad Roberts called the fair catch and took it. That flag came all the way from the back judge at the 35-yard line. He threw it all the way to the 40. This is probably going to be on the Indians. Block in the back. So the penalty against the Indians. 
they're still going to have great field position after yep. this penalty. Great work being done by our cameraman Stormy tonight. Appreciate all his efforts throughout the season. He's done a great job for us at the Indian Nation Station. He's been on the sidelines the last couple weeks getting some sideline footage for all the hype videos. Very uh, grateful for all the work that he's put in this season. Indians take over first and 10. Ball at their 44 yard line. Out of the gun, man in motion. Again, oh man. High water bounces off one man and follows his way ahead. Well, that's known as making chicken salad out of something else. Yeah. He did a good job there bouncing off that would be tackler. Was able to get back to the original line of scrimmage there, so no loss. It's still going to be second and 10. Brady Ull was out there throwing blocks for him as well. I don't think they're giving him real good spots today. No, I don't think so either. I think he dove more to the 45, but they put it back at the 44. Ull calling the signals. Back to Bro. pass. Got a man open. He's got the yeah! Good shot! Roberts! Roberts! It's going to be taken down at the five-yard line on the touchdown saving tackle. That's Brick Barker. Great job by Roberts to beat Barker on the outside route there. And Brady Ull with an absolute dime. And now the Indians are going to go hurry up. Two men to the right side. They give the ball once again. Brady Ull. Warner just trying to fight his way down inside the five. The Indians, that was a great play. Great job on right there by Brady Hewell, man. He has a way of just uh, lofting that ball out there, and it's it's like uh, it's like picking up a baby. He must be feeling good because that ball was on the money. Four and a half to go, first quarter, no score. Oh, and man. And now we've got uh, movement. Movement against the Indians. That'll take it back five. Still be second goal to go, but further out there. That's the things you can't have when you're inside the red zone there, Tama. These, these false start penalties. I know it's loud here tonight. We're on Edgewood side. The place is packed. You just have to pay attention to your offense, to your quarterback. Colton Booker is going to be lining up uh, at a wing. Mickey Anderson in the slot left side. Booker in motion. Pitch comes. Kai Warner finds the hole. Kai Warner touchdown. Touchdown. On the 11 yard touchdown run. That is huge. The Indians getting on the board first. Thanks in part to that huge pass from Brady Ull to Drayshawn Roberts there on first down, or on second down, I should say, back at the beginning of this drive. That's gonna bring Jackson Tromblay on. Perfect Line as drive. always. Yeah, he's only missed two all year. 403 left to go here in our first quarter. And the pick win is take a seven nothing lead on the homestanding Cougars of Edgewood. Well, we're certainly glad that you are joining us tonight. Don't forget, if the Indians would win tonight, we'll be back there at the uh, Buffalo Wings and Rings. Wednesday on night. Wednesday night, 7.30, with another one of our uh, pre-games. Now, that will not be live, we'll be taping it. But, that was a uh, fun thing to do. Oh. I enjoyed being out there. Hopefully, I can be there again. Hopefully, we have reason to be. Yes. Because we'll only do it if the Indians win. Right now, they have a 7 0 lead as we're getting late in the first quarter. 4 0 3 left to go. This should be a fairly quick ball game, you would figure, with the fact that uh, you're not going to see a whole lot of passes coming the way of Edgewood. Probably. Kicking her off here. And again, goes on through. 
that is just huge to have a kicker that can do that on every single kickoff. You don't see that, and you don't see a lot of kickoffs be returned in college or in the pros anymore. Yeah. But to do it in high school, it's huge. See if the defense can come out here and keep getting these good stops. Riley Brown wears number 11. He is the quarterback for this team. He himself is rushed only five times for 41 yards, but they average eight yards on those carries. They're going to give it once again, Crosby. Crosby finds good yardage this time. Bryson Roberts, one of those who was there to get him. Also, Sam Spese, who along with Anson Cox was one of our guests the other day on the pregame show. That's what uh, Crosby's been used to doing all year long. He just got eight yards. He's so used to getting that ball, picking up eight, nine, ten yards of carry. That's what the Indians cannot allow to happen. Oh, counter. Great We're job. Bring it over here on the near side with the carry, Braden Sullivan. Devin Finley there with a huge play for the Indians there to stop that. It was a counter. It took a long time to develop, and the Indians were ready for it. Uh, Braden Sullivan, who last week, his Lima senior, had 18 carries, 120 yards, and a touchdown. So that brings up a third down. He needs to love to keep them down here in their own end. 2.56 to go, and we're going to have a timeout called here. Timeout called by the Edgewood Cougars. Pickwa leads at 7 0 here on the Indian Nation Station. Come join 36 Skate Club, Miami County's family roller skating rink for lots of fun and great exercise. Birthdays are great on roller skates, whether it's a private or in-session party. Check out their website at 36skateclub.com to book your birthday party or company event online. Plus, bring the family out for dinner in their newly renovated cafe for stone oven pizzas, fries, chicken tenders, plus a whole lot more. Did you know that 36 Skate Club offers skate lessons for all ages? Roller skating is a great activity for the whole family. 36 Skate Club is located at 4845 West US Route 36 in Piqua. They're open Thursdays 6.30 to 9, Fridays 1 to 3 and 7 to 10, Saturdays 2 to 5 and 6 to 9, and Sundays 2 to 5. It's a third and three for the Edgewood Cougars. Oh. And that's the kind of mistake you cannot make. We have done that way too many times this year. We have to watch the ball. That's a huge first down given up there. That brings it out to the 32 yard line. Good crowd on both sides. Very happy with the way Pickwood traveled here tonight. Always go pass. Back to pass, looking over the middle. The left-hander gets it there, and he gets it there to Evan Swartz. The tight end, 6'2", 190-pound senior. That's his 10th reception of the year. Schwartz with a little curl route there. Great job to find a little soft spot in the defense. He'll put it right on him. Bryson Roberts with the tackle. Late in the first quarter, Indians lead at seven nothing, but right now it's Edgewood on the march. Riley Brown on the give. And that is going to be Jake Valerio. Valerio taken down. Colton Booker one of those who is in on the stop, but they get it out to midfield. That'll bring up a second down and about five. There are two minutes to go, first quarter. Yeah, this has Indians been a pretty quick first, first blood quarter. in this game. Crosby with it. Crosby just kind of burrows his head, but then he's shoved back. We'll see where forward progress is going to be marked at. You know, you said earlier something about the spots there. He kind of got a bad spot there, too. I think he was closer to the 45-yard line than what they gave him. 
So at least it's going both ways. Yeah. <laughs> and I would think if they don't get this, this is a place that they might well go for. It. Yeah. They're going to get, get it. it. Great effort. Pavey and Crosby just takes it right up the middle. Sam Smeezing definitely trying to pull him back, but great effort there, but Crosby's just too strong. So the ball now at the 44-yard line. The Indians making the lead early in this one. Edgewood's going to take another timeout here. So with the second timeout, 7-0. Indians leading the Cougars here with 101 left to go in the first quarter on the Indian Nation Station. Left to go in the first quarter. Indians leading seven nothing, but it's Edgewood right now who has moved the ball down into Indian territory. It's a first and ten with the ball on the Indians' 44-yard line. Tip City leading Trotwood seven nothing in the first quarter as well. They'll give the ball to Valerio. Valerio picking up good yardage there before he is brought down by Mickey Anderson. That'll be a first down now for the Cougars. Cougars starting to finally find their groove after those first couple drives didn't really go their way. Keeping the Indians defense here on the field. Indians backs against the wall here, but they're a very good defense trying to pull out the stop. Tavian Crosby, the back on the right, on the left, Valerio. Valerio again finds a hole. He spins his way ahead and is finally brought down again. Mickey Anderson is there. Edgewood very lucky to get that handoff clean. Valerio bobbled the handoff a bit, but he was able to pull it down and pick up about seven yards. Well, that's gonna do it for our first quarter. In our first 12 minutes of play, the only score on the board comes by the Indians. 7 0. They lead the Cougars here on the Indian Nation Station. I had a lot of struggle trying to find a proper real estate agent to help me with all of my house buying needs. And the last people I came to was Kathy and her team, and they're just amazing. I highly 10 out of 10 recommend. Kathy just sold my house in record time, record offers, record showings. If you need to sell a house, go with Kathy. She is the absolute best. Kathy's team helped me out so much. It was a great process. The gifts. <laughs> Look forward to living here in Ohio and recommending many uh, future home buyers to use Kathy and her team to find the perfect house for them. We found that having Kathy Haney as our realtor, we were comforted and encouraged by her professional experience. Definitely highly recommend, definitely. We just sold our house because of Kathy Haney's amazing skills. She is positive and thorough, and I can't say enough good things about Kathy. Thanks, Kathy, you're the best. Thanks, Kathy. A second and four coming up now for the Edgewood Cougars. Ball on the Indians, 27-yard line. Induced backfield. Crosby. Crosby, they got it. Bumble, the ball is out! Bumble. The ball is out! Pickle's gonna recover it in the end zone. That's huge! They were able to do that to him last year. I believe that was Colt Booker ripped that one out. Well, if indeed that was Colton Booker, that will be his fourth forced fumble of the year. 
that and the Indians huge. now take over. And the ball went in the end zone, and Dre Sean recovered it, so it's a touchback. So they'll have the ball at their own 20-yard line. Will the Pickway Indians here? You know, we talked about it on Wednesday night, Tom, the turnover battle. There's one. Last year, Edgewood at least had three, four turnovers. Fumbles, always a big key. Wide to the left side, Elijah Frazier. Man in the slot left side. Bull calls the signals. Bull gives the ball, and uh, Kai Warner's not going to get much of anything. He's going to be taken down. Several players in on it, including Hunter Allen, the linebacker. Yeah, Phillip Johnson, the, the defensive lineman, really blew that play up there for Edgewood. Great job getting in there by him. I think that's the first negative yardage play Pick was had all night. So they lose two, it'll be a second and 12. Yeah, they'd really like to be able to take advantage of the mistake there by the Cougars. That fumble. A two score lead is gonna be huge for the Indians if we can get this. Kai Warner oh, turns man. the corner right there at the yard line marker. Penalty flag on the field. It's going against Piqua here. And now it's Piqua that's making mistakes on this drive. On the hold. They're going to decline it. Edgewood's going to decline that penalty, so it's going to bring up, I think it's third and nine here for the Indians. That's probably pretty smart, but the Indians can pick up nine, ten yards pretty quick. On third down. Oh, he's got it. Looking him. over the middle. Yes. Mickey Anderson's got it. Great quick pass by Brady Old to Mickey Anderson. He's just started running down the field, found a soft spot in, in between both corners. Was able to pick up a good 18 yards. Braden Sullivan, the man who stops him, not before the Indians get the first down out to the 38 yard line. Early on in the second quarter here, Indies lead it 7 0. Out of the gun. There's a pass. On the little pitch. It goes out. Ray Sean Roberts taking it a first down to the 50. 11 yard gain on that pass play as that's considered a pass when you throw it forward like that. Dre Sean has done a great job these last couple weeks not running east and west, but he's turning it up more north and south. I swear he got to the 50. It was close. But it's a first down. Indians with one man to the left, two to the right. Man on a wing. Now Kai Warner. Kai Warner will pick up two. Indians are just doing a wonderful job controlling the line of scrimmage on offense. I'll tell you what, everything is a yard back for both teams. Yes. That'll bring up the second nine. Hawk continues to roll. Back to pass, looking, got time. Oh, over hit him on right the far team. side, no. Looking for Colton Booker. Booker to no for it. Couldn't hold on. That'll bring up third down. That's a big drop. That was right in Booker's hands. He also had Ryan Brown open on a slant on this side of the field. He was in man-to-man -man coverage. He was looking Booker's way, I think, all the way. Mickey Anderson is going to come out to the slot. Ryan Brown, who we talked about earlier, he's the man on the outside right side. Two to the left as well. 
Kai Warner off the right hip of the quarterback cool. Screen. He's gonna get one out there. It's gonna be a first down yardage and taken down. Coming in there, Evan Swartz. One of several players who goes both ways here for the Edgewood Cougars. Edgewood's got a lot of those players just like Pickwood does that play both ways. We got Dre Sean and Booker and Frazier. Mickey Anderson has been out there a lot on offense here tonight. He's been taking a lot of snaps. Nine minutes left, first half. First and 10 Indians. Inside the 40 yard line. They're gonna give it. Kai Warner, big hole! He's Kai gone. Warner at the 20. Kai Warner at the 10. Dragged down around the seven yard line. Wow, that hole opened right up and Kai Warner was not going to miss it. Well, let's see where they spot this one. They're standing like it's at the six. Kai Warner, lone back. Here goes Kai Water. And he's gonna pick up at least a couple of yards there before he is brought down. He is taken to the turf. Wyatt Walker. They're just gonna keep pounding this ball here with Kai. We got uh, Peyton Alfenbacher out here in the slot. He's seeing some playing time early on. Kai bounces the outside. That's He's it. gonna have it. Three yard touchdown run. Kai Water and the Indians take a 13 to nothing lead. Second rushing touchdown of the night for Kai. Great job to see that the hole was closed up, but he was able to bounce that thing right to the outside and nothing but pay dirt in front of him. That was a huge turnover deep inside the red zone. And then Brady Ull laid a great drive down the field. Through the upright and good. 14 to nothing. Indians with the lead here on Edgewood with 8-10. Left to go in the first half. I tell you what, partner, it seems like the Indians came to play tonight. Well, you know, we've seen them a couple of times this year in in big games, such as Xenia, where they, they did seem to come out a little bit flat. They, they were a little bit flat the uh, first game against Stebbins. But uh, right here, they have been out there and getting it done early on. With 8-10 left to go in the first half, lots and lots of time. And this is one very good Edgewood team, the record. At 10 and one, they lost their first game of the year and then have won 10 straight. The Indians, on the other hand, nine and two, and they've been win three, lose one. I think it was win three, lose another one. And they have won three again. This one into the wind, so it's gonna wind up short. It's gonna be br brought back here. I think that was Sullivan on the return, number 32. Yep. Braden Sullivan, who averages almost 21 yards per return. And he'll bring it back out here. Out to about the 27 yard line. Tip City recovered a Trotwood fumble at the Ram 21 yard line with a minute 24 left in the first quarter. Still 7 0 Tip City over Trotwood. So I think the only two teams left out of the MBL in the playoffs pick one tip. Pass. They're going to pass the ball. Yep. Uh, nope. Quarterback's going to run it. He doesn't do that that much. Riley Brown adds uh, like his sixth run of the year. Yeah. Which Both is crazy. Will push him out. It's crazy to think that he run. he's ran the ball only six, seven times this year because the, the wing T offense is a triple option offense. He has so many different options, and he can run it any time. But you look at those running options that he has out there. Yeah. 
with his other backs. So on a second and three. That's gonna be good for the first down. And the ball carrier, Tavian Crosby, the 5'11", 210 pound senior, he's listed as a fullback. Nick, dude's, he, dude's a big guy. Mm -hmm. He's definitely strong. We've seen him keep his legs turning. He always seems to fall forward, which is always what you want to see in any kind of running back or fullback. Another counter here, Sullivan. Sullivan brings it out to the 45 yard line. Colton Booker is making all kinds of tackles. I'm going to be interested to see how many tackles he has at halftime. That'll bring up a second down and seven. 7.15 left in the first half. Happy to have you along here on the Indian Nation Station. Thanks to everyone who's watching the game live, but thanks to everyone who showed up to this game here in Ed Trenton, Ohio tonight. So they give the ball, Valerio. Valerio tries to cut back. He is gonna be brought down. Again, Sam Smeezing is one of those there, Colton Booker. A lot of white shirts in the area as that'll bring up third down. They have to get it across midfield. It's a huge third down here for the Indians. A stop here with the way your offense has been moving, the ball could be insanely huge. Bill wants a timeout though. Now Bill Lee's calls timeout. First timeout is called by the Indians. And let's take a timeout as well. 622 left to go first half. 14 to nothing. Pick one. Leading Edgewood on the Indian Nation Station. Have you heard of this and that candy on Main in downtown Piqua? It's for kids of all ages. If they don't have it, they don't make it. This and that candy on Main has your favorite retro candy. You know from when you were a kid. There's a selection of 165 glass bottle sodas and 84 kinds of saltwater taffy. Retro toys? They've got them too. This and that candy on Main. 408 North Main Street. Find them on Facebook or call 937-541-2201. If we don't have it, they don't make it. On third and four for the Cougars. They give it to Crosby, and Crosby's gonna have the first down and just keeps turning those legs. He's finally brought down by Derek Jones. Derek Jones, defensive lineman, 5'11", 223 pound junior. He was very, very low to the ground right there. That's why he was able to keep those feet moving and keep going forward, dragging guys along with him. Crosby is a load to take down. Well, the Cougars have been able to move the ball, but they had that fumble, which gave it up to the Indian. Oh. Here's another pass over the middle. Penalty and flag. Now we're going to have the laundry out there. Looks like an ineligible receiver downfield. That's one of those things you got to watch out for with the wing T offense. They don't pass it very often. These offensive linemen are used to run blocking. That time they just got a little too far down the field. So that'll bring it back here. 5.51 to go first half. 14 to nothing. Indian with the lead. Ty Warner with two touchdowns. Ball just into Indian territory. Oh, man. Brown Great job. on the handoff. Gets the ball there to Braden oh. Sullivan. Now there's going to be flags. I was about to say it was a great job by Brennan Johns there, making that turning that running back inside way before he wanted to, but now it looks like we're going to get something after the play. Now this is the kind of thing you just don't want to see. They're going to call a targeting call. 
or I mean that's the signal for targeting in college but that's a helmet I think it was a helmet contact I don't think there's a rule to where you eject a player in high school yet but I'm sure it's coming I don't really agree with that call but it breaks the ball down to the 32 yard line where it's going to be a first down coming up here for the Cougars now they got close last time and then gave up the ball on the fumble into the end zone and the Indians were able to take it back the other way and score their second touchdown of the game. So, Tavian Crosby across the 30 and now. Devin yeah. Finley's ripping that ball out. Crosby is carrying that ball a little loose still even after that first fumble and the Indians know that the Indians have watched plenty of film they played against Crosby last year they know the way that he runs the ball so they're going to be attacking that ball all game long that'll bring up a second down here inside five to go first half beautiful night for football yes it is particularly sitting here the first weekend in November such a great scenic atmosphere at this stadium, too. Valerio is going to be brought down. Mickey Anderson in there. Also, you got Sam Smeezing right there. That brings up third down. This Pickwood defensive line, they have been undersized all year long. The biggest player, Anson Cox, the smallest, Brennan Johns. But boy, oh boy, can they affect any play at any time. It is what a force them into making a decision coming up here on a fourth down. Crosby with it. But nope. Crosby's going to get that first down. He'll be brought down, Devin Finley. Linebacker, six foot, 197 pound junior. So another first down here. Crosby is so strong, Drayshawn went low and he just stiff-armed him right to the ground and kept on trucking. Again, last time Edgewood was down here in the, the red zone, they fumbled it away. The Indians do get the ball to begin the second half though. On a first and 10. Nothing. Crosby again. Hayden Waggle. And Cox is there. Waggle again in there as well. Again, that, that, that defensive line is playing lights out here tonight. Trying to stop this Edgewood offense is not easy. And the Indians have been doing a pretty good job of it. They haven't allowed any points, obviously, through the, through the first two quarters. As we're under three minutes now until halftime. Yeah, they'd love to be able to keep this ball out of the end zone here. Lone back is Crosby. Man in motion. Pitch comes to Crosby. Tries to turn the corner. And gets it down to the 11 yard line. Fabian Crosby. It's going to be a third and three, a big third and three. You have to imagine with their struggles that kickers had, this is four down territory for Edgewood all the way. So Huge couple of plays. Third and three. Ball at the 11-yard line. Huge couple of plays here coming up for this Pickwood defense. Let's see what they got. Rick Parker wide to the right. Crosby again. Crosby. Going to be stacked up. He's short. Marking him right down there at the nine. They got to get to the eight for that first down. A huge play coming up. You know they're going to go right back to Crosby here. Yep. So on fourth and one. Big play still relatively early in this ball game. 1.20 to go in the half. 
Indians with a 14-0 lead. Deuce backfield now. Timeout. That was a big timeout taken there by Piqua. Bill Neese let him come out, line up. Now he wants to go talk it over here. Man, what a ball game so far tonight, Tom. Oh, 14 to nothing on a couple of touchdowns by Kai Warner. Explosive plays for this Indians offense tonight. They had an explosive play down here by the defense the last time Edgewood was down here with uh, you know, forcing the fumble and recovering it. And now and we have a huge fourth down opportunity for another explosive play. 16 tourney appearances for this Edgewood team. 18 time, they are league champs going back to 1970, which was their first year. They've been in three different leagues right now as the SWOC. Here they come on a huge fourth and one. Again, Deuce backfield. Brown gives it. Valerio, first down. It's a great job to mix it up. We thought they were going to go Crosby all the way, and they ended up going with Valerio that time. Now it's first and goal. And the Indians were able to get the ball back off a turnover. Last time we saw... Edgewood down in this particular area of the field. Now the scoreboard's wrong here. Edgewood only has one timeout and so does Piqua. Uh -huh. And we're under a minute. Brennan Johns, great job coming off the end to bring Crosby down. Brennan Johns on top, Anson Cox. Or Brennan Johns on the bottom, Anson Cox on top. And I think Anson's slow to get up. Somebody's slow to get up. I think they were just gonna tangled up there. 37 seconds left. And you're absolutely right. Just the one time out. Yeah. Both teams with one and Edgewood's got to hurry up if they're going to score. They got to burn this time out and kick a field goal. Valerio. Valerio stops. gets it inside the five but is going to be driven down. Edgewood, Edgewood's coach ran out all the way out to the 20-yard line at the numbers to call that timeout. That's their last timeout. So now they're going to have this either third, it's going to be third and goal, I believe, with only 19 seconds left. You've got to run two plays here if you're not going to kick a field goal because or throw the ball. Yeah, I think the, the some of the folks who take care of the Cougars scoreboard are a little bit too involved in the game because we have it. Uh... Both pick one edge would have one timeout going into the drive. But obviously, the scoreboard, like you said, those operators, they're probably down there hooting and hollering just as much as we are up here at the top. So the Indians trying to go in to the halftime locker room with a 14-0 lead. They'll have the ball to begin the second half. Having deferred to the second half, winning the uh, coin toss. This is going to be a big, big play. They're at the four-yard line. It's third down. You don't get a touchdown on this play. you got to run your field goal team out there if you want points before halftime. Elijah Frazier's pumping up this pick with crowd. He's in for the touchdown. Four yard touchdown run by Crosby. It was a matter of time before Crosby got that ball up the middle. And a huge extra point coming up for this Edgewood team. Now let's see who they've got out there. They've got Rumpler out there to do the kicking. And he is just 35 of 42 on extra points this year. It's good. 
So with just 14 seconds left to go in the first half, the Indians' lead is cut to 14 to seven. Uh, happy to have you along here on the Indian Nation Station. Don't forget, we hope this uh, football season goes on and on and on. And when basketball season starts, we'll also have a number of the Indians games, both the boys and the girls for you. Also have some wrestling on the Indian Nation Station, Absolutely. along with some swimming and boys and girls bowling as well. Those schedules will be coming out soon. Looking forward to that. We'll get to work with uh, Coach Gillespie doing some of that basketball. He wasn't able to be here tonight for his coaching duties there in Houston. I know he's watching the game at home. David Rumpler is going to be kicking it off. That's going to be Elijah Frazier bringing it back, diving across the 25-yard line. Now, if this one goes back to the 24. It took them a while, at least two or three seconds, to actually stop the clock. There should be more like 10 to 11 seconds, but I'm pretty sure the Indians are just going to come out here. They may take a knee or just one run. Maybe they'll run one big play. You never know. They got one timeout. But you do get the ball in the second half, so it would not make any sense to try anything real drastic here. Just going to take the knee. And that'll do it for the first half. I'll tell you what, the Indians gave up that late touchdown, but they have played well offensively and defensively in this one. Yes, At halftime of this, the Region 8 Division 2 Second round playoff game. The Pico Indians leading the Edgewood Cougars 14 to seven here on the Indian Nation Station. Buffalo Wings and Rings in Piqua is located at 989 East Ash Street. They have 45 TVs to watch all the live sports that you could imagine and offer a wide variety of food options. From burgers to wings, nachos, and yes, the pretzel bites, there's something for everybody. Stop by the Piqua Wings and Rings location before the game to get fueled up for the competition and after for the celebration. Dr. Littlejohn believes that clear vision begins with regular comprehensive eye exams. His friendly and professional staff will make you feel welcome in his office located at 8090 Looney Road. With our great selection of stylish eyewear, our licensed opticians will help you pick the perfect pair of glasses. Dr. Littlejohn participates in many vision plans. Call us at 937-606-2772 to schedule your next eye exam. We look forward to seeing you soon. Go pick Tonight, our first proposing on the clarinet, Bill Frost on 
once the one stolen and then never taken back. From the furnace, I am wrapped in foil, a machine of tin, fortified for a life that is unbreakable. into the world of feeling, giving away this metal armor to a world that is teeming with pitfalls and perils and problems. I've searched all across this land, yet this love I seek isn't love that can be gifted by another. It is from a heart that beats to its own drums, a heart full of love from within.
Jackson. The band program is under the direction of directors Mitch Mahaney and Wyatt Hines. The dark directors are Bill Schultz and Jacob Knight. The production director is Graham Carter with assistance from Carly Miles. The prize is going to consist of OMEA State Marching Band Finals and a participant in Dance of America Grand National. The prize took place first in Class A and was second place overall at the Norwood Invitational and was first place in Class A and Grand Champion at the Marion Mosul and was first place in Class A at the Burt Fair Invitational. The prize will be performed at OMEA State Marching Band Finals this Sunday at Alexander Stadium at 3.30. Good luck, prize! Trusted partnerships are built around positive experiences over time. At Haran, we strive to make each interaction a legendary experience. We do this by going the extra mile, moving faster, digging deeper, lifting higher. We call this the Haran way. Our focus is simple, provide premier consulting around solutions that support physical and financial wellness, all while doing what's best for the client. We couldn't do this without the support of the communities where we live and work. That's why it's important to give back to initiatives that educate, enrich, and heal. Discover the Haran Way. Moore's Comfort Systems is a locally owned and operated company right here in Piqua. We have been in the HVAC business for over 29 years. We offer professional solutions to all of your heating, cooling, and plumbing needs. Morse Comfort System is a factory authorized carrier dealer. We service the entire Miami County and surrounding areas. Our employees are experienced and trained to assure you the best service and install. We offer annual service maintenance plans and complete system replacement options. Morris Comfort Systems is searching for experienced, hardworking individuals that are wanting the opportunity to elevate their career. If you are looking for a rewarding career more than just another job, we may be the right fit for you. Contact Morris Comfort Systems at 937-773-5662 or online at morriscomfortsystems.com. Go Indians!
towns were conquered. Villages were raided. Lives were destroyed. All hope was lost. The dusk set the damage was surveyed, and villages rebuilt. strives to hire talented people, passionate to continue learning both professionally and personally. When you walk in the building, you can sense family, teamwork, and fun. Come join the team of dedicated workers and become a part of the Craig's family today. No matter if it was a long day at work, home, the practice field, or you're just celebrating a big win with your teammates, the Pickwood Little Caesars has you covered. Pick up a hot and ready $5.99 pizza anytime. Your Pickwood Little Caesars are proud sponsors of the Indian Nation Station and Pickwa Athletics. Atlantis Sportswear Incorporated in Piqua, Ohio is a family-owned company that started in 1985. With over 30 years of screen printing excellence, Atlantis is dedicated to producing screen printed apparel of the highest quality to their customers. 
Atlanta Sportswear is currently hiring new employees to join their team. If you are the employee who has drive and ambition that wants to succeed in your career field, Atlanta Sportswear wants to meet with you to talk about the career opportunities they have. Atlanta Sportswear offers full-time, part-time, and a flexible employee work shift, and full-time employees have a full benefit package, including medical, vacation time, and a generous 401k program. Please feel free to contact Atlanta Sportswear Incorporated through their website if you are interested in joining Team Atlantis. Welcome back. We are here at uh, Kumler Stadium, Trenton, Ohio, not too far from Middletown. And at the half of this Division II Region 8 second round game, the Pickle Indians hold a 14 to seven lead on the homestanding Edgewood Cougars. My name is Tom Michaels, and alongside AJ Ganger, who is filling in for the coach, Brian Gillespie. Brian, we miss you. And uh, hopefully we got, uh, got reason to get together one week hence. But uh, as we take a look, you've got some stats there, AJ. So in the first half, Edgewood ended up running 31 total plays for 148 yards. Pickle, on the other hand, 16 plays for 159. The Indians have thrown the ball four times for 91 yards. Edgewood just two times for 13. Pickle with 68 rushing yards. Edgewood 135. Tavian Crosby leads the way for Edgewood. 17 carries, 78 yards and a touchdown. Jake Valero with eight carries, 46 yards. Kai Warner with 11 carries, 57 yards for the Indians. Brady Uhl, three of four passing for 91 yards. Drayshawn Roberts with a 50-yard catch. Mickey Anderson, 29-yard catch. Kai Warner, 12. Jackson Trombe has just punted the ball one time for a long of 45 yards. Up. And then we've got one turnover for Edgewood. That was the fumble. They lost deep inside the red zone. The Indians have been penalized four times. Edgewood twice. And Edgewood leads the time possession 14.05 to 9.41. Those are your first half stats here from Trenton. Well, if there was anything a, a little bit surprising there, we, uh, we saw a couple of passes yeah. uh, coming the way of Edgewood. They are not a passing team. They only passed three times all last week uh, against uh, uh, Lima Senior. Again, the winner of this game goes against the winner of Anderson and Little Miami, and I believe Anderson had just taken a lead. Uh, but that one is a Donnybrook once again. Yeah, I've seen two different scores. I've seen it tied at 13 apiece. I've seen Anderson leading 20 to 13. Winton Woods right now up 14-7 on Ross. Kings running away with it, 28-7 against Withrow. And Tip City is now up 29-0 over Trotwood there in Division Three. Indians get the ball here in the second half to begin it, Tom. One of the big stats that I've noticed that Brian put together for me this week, since week one, no opponent has scored more than 21 points against Edgewood. The Indians have a chance to put that 21 points on the board in this first opening drive. Well, Pequa has a 2-0 lead in the series. This is the third time these two teams have played. Uh, both the previous times, and this one as well, in the playoffs. And one of those coming last year, 28-21. The other one, 21-0. The Indians back in 2001. So we are just about ready to go, getting ready to get the game clock all squared away here. Once it runs down to zero, they'll pop it back up to 12 and we'll be ready to go. Indians will be running right to left here in this third period. Now the wind was coming from the right, all right down the field in that first half but it has lessened quite a bit. There was quite a bit more wind early in that first half. We're ready to go. David Rumpler is gonna be kicking it off here. 
Only the second time we've seen a kickoff coming the way of the Indians. And it is going to be taken back there at about the 10-yard line. Deshaun Roberts. Roberts gets it up there close to the 30-yard line, but we do have a number of flags out there on the play. Yeah, Peyton Offenbacher down there with a block in the back on the 20-yard line. Didn't really need to happen because Dre Sean has that blazing speed, but now the Indians, instead of starting to cross the 30, are going to be backed up towards the 10. So that's... Wynton Woods up 21-14 at the half, and Anderson up 27-20 at the half. Uh, this is the kind of mistake that the Indians do not want to uh, give any kind of an edge here to Edgewood. So the ball goes back to the 10-yard line. Indians going to have to go 90 yards here for a touchdown. I believe, Tom, this is their worst starting field position in the postseason. Brady Uhl on the pitch, comes over to Kai Warner. Kai Warner looking to get a block there and uh, never found it. Tried to come back the other way, was looking for a block for from Colton Booker, but as he went back the other way, they just collapsed on him. And so they lose five yards on that play and it'll be a second and 15 coming up and they got their belt backs right up against the goal line now. Great pursuit there by Edgewood's defense. Kai Warner trying to get up the field, just couldn't find the blocks. So on second and 15, in the first minute of the second half, Indies lead it 14 to seven. Keeping the ball, Brady Ewell, he'll get it out to the 15 yard line. Great job there, great read from Brady Ewell on that read option, pulling it, taking it himself getting about nine yards for a little bit more manageable third and about six. And they'll put it down at the 14. Great job by Storm, our cameraman there, making sure that we got the right shot. Because even us, we, we, we were a little faked out up here too. Talk to your, talk, speak for yourself, pal. <laughs> you weren't. <laughs> I was just following Stormy. Oh, he's going Here's he's one. Going he's open. Yes. Ryan Brown. He's got the first down up to the 45-yard line. The price spotted at about the 44-43. Let's see where. The 44. They're going to mark it at the 44 there. Ryan Brown, great adjustment on his route, going more towards the back shoulder. Brady wanted a back shoulder. Brown was running more an inside uh, route there. Again, Brady Uhl, he must be feeling great with that knee, Tom, because he is putting the ball on the money all night long. Like putting a baby to bed. Kai Warner, pick up a little bit of yardage, not a whole lot. Well, Ryan Brown, we talked about him early in the ball game, that uh, he was laid low by injury. And he's just getting his uh, his first snaps in several games. Coming up here tonight. A pickup of one, second and nine now. Nine and a half to go in the third. Deshaun Roberts will take the ball, tries to turn the corner. Can't do it. He's gonna be taken down there. Rick Barker. Man, Rick Barker. He's their leading tackler. He's a safety, six foot, 170 pound senior. That was his first tackle of the night. So that'll take it back to a third and 11. Brady's done it twice already tonight. Actually three times with that Mickey Anderson catch. We'll see if he does it again. He's got some time. It's breaking down. Still looking, and he's going to be brought down. Almost a horse collar there. It was almost a horse collar and a face mask. I mean, Brady's helmet, as he got up, is pretty twisted around. There's no call there. Now it's going to be fourth and nine. So that'll bring the putting unit on here. Jackson Trombley, who averages just under. 40 yards per punt, which is excellent for high schoolers. 
He's standing way back there at his own 31, 32 yard line. First spot on 45. This one better than that first one. Ooh, back for it was know. Brett Barker. I don't know that he didn't touch that ball. I don't know if it went all the way out of bounds either. They might have got lucky there. So the Indians going to have to uh, bow the defense back up. They got a 14-0 lead on a couple of touchdowns by Kai Warner. Then they gave up that late touchdown. Crosby taking it on in from four yards out. Brown the quarterback. Crosby runs it. Doesn't get a whole lot. Devin Finley will take him down. And it looks like we get a couple of players out there. One player who is shaken up. So we got an injury timeout here is one of the blue shirts is down. Well, for the Pickway Indians, they're over there talking with the coaching staff, which of course, under 31st year head coach, Bill Knees, 230 and 109. Wow. He's got a state championship and a state runner up to his credit there. He played football back in the 70s back at Baldwin Wallace. It's good to see and, Valerio getting up there. Yep. Jake Valerio was the player who was injured, but he's coming off the field now. See how long he has to be out or whether he's able to come back in here. Riley Brown, the quarterback, doesn't pass a whole lot. He's more of a point guard. Yes, yes he is. He hands the ball off. Field general, yeah. they call him. He distributes the ball. He's under center. Crosby on the counter. Yep, here goes Crosby, finds a big hole, and is finally brought down. Colton Booker, one of those. Schwartz and Frazier getting, getting, into, getting into it on that play as uh, Colton Booker obviously was able to bring him down there, but Frazier was right with him, but Schwartz did a great job blocking. Brendan Johns also in on the tackle, brings the ball out to the 34 yard line now. Nearing seven minutes to go, third period. Crosby Bounces to the out. outside, still breaking tackles. Here goes Crosby. He's across midfield. What a job by Crosby, breaking initial contact with a stiff arm there on Bon Mickey Anderson. But what a hit there by Drayshawn Roberts to put him down right at midfield. And as we say, the spots they have been real great for either team. This one takes it back there with the nose of the ball touching the 50 yard line. It'll be a first and 10 coming up here. Six and a half to go, third period. Indians with a 14-7 lead. Oh, great job by Waggle. Once again, Tavion Crosby, the ball carrier, rushed for 1,360 yards coming into this game. Wagle got in there right as the, the handoff happened, but Anson Cox was there to follow it up. But again, Crosby just keeps falling forward. A play that should have lost two yards ended up gaining two. Second and eight. Ball on the Indians 48-yard line. Rick Barker, wide to the left. Penalty flag flew. Offsides against Pickwell. I wish the referee was mic'd up so we knew the number of that player. And that moves it on down there to the 43. Okay. 
Again with the deuce backfield. Different runner on the right side this time, but they're going to give it to the guy on the left, and that is Crosby once again. That new runner back there is Clay Halsey. I don't believe we saw him at all in the first half, and now Valerio is coming back in. Remember, Valerio was shaken up just a few plays ago, but he's coming back out there. Big third down opportunity again here for this defense to try to get off the field. Edgewood may be going for it either way, but this defensive line, those last couple plays have been in that backfield. So yeah, if they don't get this, my money's on them going for it. Yep, unless they lose a ton of yardage. They're going to give it Valerio. Valerio on the near side, taken down by Sam Smeezing. He just got it on that spot. Yeah. They needed the 40, and he just got across. <laughs> Boy, this, this PA guy has really not, not checked on any of the pronunciations. No, he hasn't. Colton Bowers, how we're going to call him Colton Booker all game long. Yeah. I think that was Smizing. Yeah. Again, Brick Barker off to the left. On the counter play. Once again, going ahead and breaking tackles after tackle. It was Sullivan. Braden Sullivan. And that'll be a first down here for the Cougars. Well, what looked like a great situation for the Indians, yeah. the fact that they had the ball to begin this second half of play in a seven point lead right now looking a little dicey because they weren't able to do anything with it. And the ball now at their 25 yard line. Edwards made some nice adjustments on offense after being stopped by this Pickwood defense for most of that first half. That's why they were able to get in the end zone there. This time the pitch gonna go back to Crosby. Crosby lowers the head, bowls his way ahead. Devin Finley is there. Also coming up off the bottom of the pile, that's Aiden Weigel. Weigel's been all over the place here tonight from his defensive tackle position too. Don't forget Mickey Anderson, all these defensive guys have been flying to the ball. Just a pickup of two, so second and eight. Ball on the 23-yard line of the Indians. Already three minutes to go in the third quarter. Single back. Brown at quarterback. Back to pass, left-hander. Oh, looking, man. looking, and that ball he is caught. It. That ball is caught by Brick Barker. And if there's one play we didn't expect to see all night long, that was it. No, but then the Indians had good coverage down there. Elijah Frazier was the main cover man, and you had this safety, Bryson Roberts, back there. They, Hill just put that ball where only Baker could catch it. Rumpler on for the extra point. A big Again, extra point. 35 of 42 coming into this game. He made the earlier one. And we're tied at 14. 2.52 left to go in the third period. Pickle 14, Edgewood 14 here in this Division II Region 8 playoff game, second round. Next week, they go to the neutral sites. They'll play these two teams. Will, one of these two teams will play the winner of Anderson and uh, Little Miami is, is the last score update we got. The half was Anderson 27, Little Miami 20. Kings is up 42-14. This Pickwood team, this is going to be a huge offensive drive. Can they go down and put points on the board? Because right now it looks like this Edgewood offense is content of controlling this game and running and shortening it, running down as much clock as possible. It's 8.30 tonight, and we're almost through this third quarter. So Rumpler will be kicking it off once again. Oh. 
Should be Jatron Roberts back deep for the Indians. Well, they brought the whole crowd back into it. The Indians has taken them out there in the first half, but. Here comes Rashawn. He's returned one already. Great Roberts, return. Roberts just takes it out of bounds. Rick Barker on the cover. Rick Barker is everywhere. Yes, he is. He yeah. has been everywhere these last couple of drives. Still a heck of a catch there in the end zone as well. Indians, great field position here. They're going to start this one on the 30, their own 33 yard line. But on first down here, this last drive, the Indians had negative plays on first down every time. They got it to get pop. Once again, Kai Warner. Warner pick up some yardage there. Yep, getting late in the third period here as it continues to move on. And the Indians also content, except for the those big gainers that we have seen to keep it on the the ground here. Out deep. of the gun once again. We're gonna go deep. There it is, Ryan oh. Brown. Oh. Got the had the man open. And that was again Ryan Brown. All Ryan had to do was reach out. I think he kind of caught that ball. He had his man beat. He's been beating his man all night long. It was a great route and a great throw. Now a big third down. Can the Indians stay on the field? Looking over toward the coaching staff. Kai Warner, the running back. Off on a wing there, that is Colton Booker. And now we're gonna have a timeout call. Timeout called by the Indians. 2.06 to go in the third. We're all tied up at 14 here on the Indian Nation Station. Third and six, with 2.06 to go in the third of a tie ball game. Indians looking to get the yardage to keep it. Back to pass. Oh, oh, looking. He's got Dre shot open. Oh. And no. He was covered by Brick Barker. Dre Shawn, all he had to do that time too was reach his arms out. Mickey Anderson was also open in the slot here on the near side, but. No dice. So that's uh, that's going to bring the punting unit on here. Jackson Tromblay, one of the better high school punters you're going to find. That came to, that came to fruition last year during the uh, high snap. Was able to get it away. Came to fruition last year in the game against Edgewood. We got a penalty flag down here on this near side. It might be a sideline warning. Yeah, it's gonna be a sideline warning. So a minute 54 left to go here in the third period. All tied up 14-14. What you're gonna to need to do here is just, they need a stop here. We need a three and out. Yep. We don't get a three and out. We're going into fourth quarter and Edgewood still has the ball. Because in two plays, and this quarter's going to be over. And they 
brought that 40 second play clock over to high school now too. So that 40 second play clock starts right after the play. Ball given, Crosby gets nowhere. Great He's taken job. down, Elijah Frazier just kind of lowered the shoulder and took him down. Great job by Frazier, not getting sucked in by any of the motion that they had. Stayed home, made a great open field tackle. That'll bring up a second down here. We got it back to the line of scrimmage. You pay attention to Edgewood's offensive line, they're telling you where they're going all night long. On the counter, once again. Number 32 out there, Sullivan, Brayton Sullivan. Ran out by Bryson Roberts. Still not even maybe a yard there. This is a good defensive series, and he was knocked out of bounds. So that clock is gonna stop. Uh, we gonna miss these two guys named Roberts out there next year. Yes, we are. All these seniors, all 22 Absolutely. of them, we are going to miss them after this season. This was the last class, and I think all four years these seniors have came to the playoffs, and they've made a quite a run all four years. A little bit. They broke the huddle and then uh, were motioned back. They have five on the play clock. A little swing pass out near side. Once again, Sullivan. Mickey Anderson with a great tackle over here to prevent him from getting that first down. And now they're gonna force Edgewood to punt. That'll bring Rumpler back out here. Rumpler wears number nine. On his punting, average is about 36 per kick. Six of them inside the 20 this year. Gets this one away. And it's gonna die pretty quick. They're gonna down it at 32. So with 11 seconds to go in the third, Indians get the ball back. We're all tied up, 14-14, Cougars and Indians. The winner plays at a neutral site next week against the winner of Anderson and Little Miami. That would be in the regional semifinals. We're getting down to it now. We started with 16 teams in each region last week. We're down to eight this week. Next week, we're down to four. And it's been a fun ride. Well, it'll be even more fun if the Indians can put some points on the board here. Yes. So Elijah Frazier going to go wide to the left, two men wide to the right. Kai Warner, again, Kai Warner gets nowhere. That defense is, is crowding that line of scrimmage. And the Indians cannot run the ball up the middle. They've had more success when they run off tackle all night long. And that's going to take us to the end of the the third quarter. So with that, we're tied 14-14. Great football game on a beautiful night here in Trenton, Ohio. 14-14, Indians and the Cougars on the Indian Nation Station. Come join 36 Skate Club, Miami County's family roller skating rink for lots of fun and great exercise. Birthdays are great on roller skates, whether it's a private or in-session party. Check out their website at 36skateclub.com to book your birthday party or company event online. Plus, bring the family out for dinner in their newly renovated cafe for stone oven pizzas, fries, chicken tenders, plus a whole lot more. Did you know that 36 Skate Club offers skate lessons for all ages? Roller skating is a great activity for the whole family. 
36 Skate Club is located at 4845 West U.S. Route 36 in Piqua. They're open Thursdays 6.30 to 9, Fridays 1 to 3 and 7 to 10, Saturdays 2 to 5 and 6 to 9, and Sundays 2 to 5. So we come back to play here to begin the fourth period of play. Cougars 14, Indians 14. Indians with the ball. They've got a second and 10. Edgewood has scored 14 unanswered points here. It's been a tale of almost two halves. Kai Water. <laughs> Picks up minimal yardage there. That'll bring up a third down and nine. Edgewood is definitely stacking that box here. This might be that time for that screen pass that we saw earlier in the game that worked very well for a huge game. Or we go deep again. Ryan Brown has been beating his man all night long. You also got Frazier and Anderson back out there too. Andre Sean. Ryan Brown here on the right side. Three men wide left. And oh they were going for Mickey Anderson. And I don't think Anderson knew it. No, nope. Mickey saw that ball coming in, but he didn't think he was throwing it to him. All he had to do was reach out and catch it. And that'll bring up fourth down. So back on Jackson Trombley. And the Indians have just kind of stalled out offensively here for the last quarter and a half. Gets a nice one away. Drives Barker back. Barker tries to bring it ahead. Barker gonna be swarmed under. Owen Schaller there for the Indians. Let's see if we can get another good defensive possession here out of these guys. There's still a lot of time left in this game, but you do not want Edgewood to control it. Reminder, our sponsors, Kathy Henney, Little Caesars, Teach Tech Productions, Buffalo Wings and Rings, Dick Lumpkins, this and that's Candy on Main, Harmony Systems, Cranks Corporation, Edison State, Dr. Littlejohn, Morris Comfort Systems, Atlanta Sportswear, Couple more coming up for you in just a moment. Again, the lefty, Brown throws it. Rick Barker with the catch. Dreshawn Roberts is one of several there who stop him. Atlanta Sportswear, 36 Skate Club, and Horan. So it's gonna be a second and short coming up here for the Cougars of Edgewood. Ball just shy of the 47 yard line. We got a new man out right. And he's just a decoy because there it is once again with Travian Crosby. He'll pick up another first down here and gets it down into Indians territory. Crosby's got to watch the way he's holding that ball. He already fumbled once already. He's still holding that ball out there like a loaf of bread. And pretty soon, the Indians are going to try to strip that thing away. Loose backfield. They give it. Valerio. Valerio's going to be wrapped up. Sam Smeezing. Dre Sean's going to get called with a face mask. And again, you just can't make those mistakes. The Indians haven't made any turnovers here tonight, but these penalties have sure hurt them. I don't think it was as bad as a face mask as you think. I think that's why it's only five yards because they still have that rule in high school. So the ball at the 38 yard line. Mm -hmm. 
at first and two. Crosby. He's as reliable as anybody we have seen this year. Yes. And just getting the ball and getting the needed yardage. That'll put it down there at the 35 yard line. Landon Martin coming in here for Brennan Johns now, giving him a little bit of a breather. Very physical player here on the end. Very good wrestler too. With first and 10, nearing nine minutes to go. Oh, there's a full start. 72 moved and the officials caught it. I didn't think they were going to. That's a big penalty. So that moves it back. Puts the ball at the 45 now. We do hit nine minutes to go in regulation. Rick Barker wide right. Schmeezing with that tackle, that was a good tackle by Schmeezing, but he's going for that ball and he almost got it out. Crosby again the ball carrier, but he only picks up a couple. The Indians have been stacking the box all night long. Bryson Roberts, as, as the safety, has not been playing very, very deep all night. Fourteen. This is going to be a pass. Well, nope. He's going to be uh, taken down and finally out of bounds. Anson Cox tried to shoulder him out. Devin Finley with the cleanup. Now we got a huge third and long here. This is a big play for this Indians defense to get off the field. Still plenty of time left on the clock. I believe both teams still have all three timeouts. I think Pickle might have two. So Ryan French was the quarterback. Now they bring Brown back in, Wiley, Riley Brown. Third and 16. Slipped and fell, Landon Martin caused all kinds of havoc back there. And Riley was trying to get away from the pressure and slipped and fell. So that takes us to fourth down. Fourth down and real long. Indians are gonna get this ball back with a chance to take this lead. They gotta get a touchdown. I believe they have to get a touchdown to win this game. Rumpler. And it's going to be taken at the 10 yard line. Dreshawn Roberts. A 40, about 39, 40 yard punt there for Edgewood. And now the Indians look like they're going to have to go 89 yards here. The wind has died down quite a bit. They do have a great field goal kicker, but partner seven points or six points here is going to look way better than seven. Absolutely. I can't believe we've had two games like this, back-to-back -back years this close with these two teams. This is almost becoming a, a little mini rivalry game. So Ryan Brown wide to the right for the Indians, two split to the left. Brady Ewell out of the gun on the pitch, goes to Kai Warner, and Kai Warner's gonna pick up short yardage there. Pick up probably three yards. That'll bring up a second and seven. It's a great run on first down. Staying ahead of schedule. It's something we haven't seen a lot of. When the Indians run outside, they're getting way more success. Again, Ty Water, and they got him. Oh, my goodness. He's only going to use, lose a yard there, though. This forward progress was just uh, behind the line of scrimmage, but it's still a big third and long. 
Phillip Johnson there with the tackle. That'll bring up third down. Got Mickey Anderson Let's deep. See. There's interference. Then we're going to get a call. Yes. That was definitely holding by Baker there. He grabbed on the Anderson's jersey and was pulling on it. And the Indians are going to get a first down on a huge call. Baker was beat and knew it. So the Indians will get the first down and where are they gonna spot the ball? They are spotting it there at the 28 yard line. Fresh set of downs here. Gotta keep trucking and moving this ball down the field. Take as much time off the clock as possible. Smeezing is in running now. So I think it's the first time we have seen Sam Smeezy as the running back. Tonight, yes. Kai had been kind of stymied there for a little while. Sam's so, more that power back. Yep. Kai's more that speed back. Sometimes you got to have some thunder to go along with some lightning. During five minutes to go of a 14-14 tie. They're gonna give it Smeezing once again. Smeezing gets it down. Then a couple of yards of a first down. That'll bring up third. About a yard and a half. Yeah. Indians haven't had success running the ball up the middle here. These, these last few drives spanning back to the second quarter. But now with that power back, Sam Smeezing in there, they're having no trouble at all. They'll give it to him again. He's got the first down. Out to the 40. Four and a half minutes to go. We're tied, 14-14. Winner goes on to play next week against the winner of Anderson and Little Miami. Got timeout? Yeah, let's see. Yeah, not sure. Pick with sidelines going absolutely crazy. The sidelines getting their fans cheering. Edgewood's fans are almost, almost, almost quiet. Uh, still, still waiting for the okay from the officials. Yeah, the official down here is talking to Edwards coach Clemens. He's looking up here at the box. I think he might have something to do with the clock. Okay, so it may be the play clock. They need 32 seconds on the play clock. They got it right now. Clock rolls. Schmeezing got it back to the line of scrimmage. It's a great job to get it back to the line of scrimmage too because he was going absolutely nowhere. No holes there in the middle. Tried to bounce it outside. Great pursuit by the Cougars. Uh, Brian Gillespie, you're missing a great one here tonight. I know he's watching it at home. Yep. I'm sure he's as stressed out right now as we are. Pickles got an opportunity. They can get it. If we get it down inside the 25-yard line with a little time left, I would give Jackson a chance to win this game. Three and a half left. Second and ten. There's Booker. Little toss ahead. 
That's Booker. He's up there, the 46 yard line. That's a huge play. Now it's third and four. You can almost do the same exact thing. You could try to run the ball power with Smeezing. It's a big call coming up here for Troy Ole in this offense. Mickey Anderson coming to the near side. He's gonna be in the slot with Ryan Brown outside him. Against Smeezing, Smeezing, first, first down! He's got it down to the 45 yard line, down into Edward territory. There was never a doubt in that one, hole opened up right away. Sam Smeezing needed to get to midfield, got to the 45. Now the Indians are gonna go race car here, go fast. Give it to Smeezing. And he'll pick up uh, maybe three yards for being driven back. That'll bring up now a second down. Inside three to go. Kai Warner's coming back out onto the field here. Smeezy's gonna get a little bit of a breather. But he did his job. And the Indians are still just outside field goal range. I know Jackson has hit 55 yarders, sometimes 63, I think, practicing, but that's in practice and not with the wind. Yeah, he'd be kicking into the wind. Great block on, by Booker. On the pitch, it goes out, Kai Warner. Warner gonna pick up at least a couple on this one, maybe three. And bring up now a third down. Big third and four, Schmeezing's not oh. on the field. What are the Indians gonna do? Colt Booker, by the way, on that last play, what a great block by him. He's been doing a great job all night long. Under two minutes to play now, partner. Gotta give credit to the defense for Edgewood as well. They have played very well in this game. Again, there's the pitch. Diving ahead. He's just short. He's just yep. short. Kai Warner. I don't like the spot by that far official. He reached out for that ball to the 35-yard line, which is where they need to get, and he didn't give it to him. Now you got a huge fourth down, and Pick was going to call a timeout. Absolutely here with one minute. 26 seconds left to go. Wow. This is a huge play because this could really decide if we're going to go to overtime or not. Because I don't think Edgewood's offense has got enough to, to score in, a, in about a minute and 15 seconds. Yeah. I'm just afraid that they do. I do too. But I think <laughs> a lot of this momentum on Pickwood's side, it, their defense is going to definitely get the style. All right now, they are wrapping the right leg of Ben Smeezing. Sam. Yeah. Ben's <laughs> you were brother. thinking of, of a UD I, I, I do the I do the UD football PA. You can't you can't swing a dead cat no. in the northern part of the Miami Valley without hitting a Smeezing. No. Those boys are, have been born and, and raised to play football. They have great mom and dad too. Chris and Paula do a great job raising those kids. So Sam's out there. They're gonna go for this, and I think this is the right call in this situation. Yep, you gotta keep trying to set yourself up for that field goal attempt. Edgewood's crowd's coming alive now, partner. Uh, they've got the chant of defense. No one has left this stadium. No. And a great crowd coming up from Pequa. And happy to have you along here on the Indian Nation Station. Big, big play coming up here. He's got it. First, first down. down. Big first down. Sam Smeezing. They move the chains. The ball is spotted at the 33 yard line. Oh, 
Ooh's gonna take Look a at shot. the pass. He's got to get rid of this ball. Great he job. does and throws it away. Great job getting rid of that ball. You cannot take a sack in that situation. No. That'll bring up a second down. He was looking for Ryan Brown again on this side. Brown got a little bit of separation, but there was just too much pressure coming in from that left side, or excuse me, that right side of that defensive line. Second and 10. A minute eight left. Oh my goodness. Play action might be a good call here. That defense has been stacking the box all night. They're stacking it again. But give it to Smeezing. Smeezing. He's short of the 30. Yeah, the imaginary yellow line, if we had it, would be around the 23 and a half yard line here. This is a big third down play. Oh. Get you a little closer for your kicker because you know you're going to have to kick a field goal here soon. Not enough time. 42 seconds and counting. Back to pass. Oh. It's got him open. Wide He's got open. him in. Oh. oh, off the fingertips. Oh, oh no. Dre shot. It was wide open. The ball hit him right in the hands. And now you have a decision to make. So you try and. Now, yeah, let's see. I don't know what you do. Maybe try to get him to jump off sides. A timeout. Yep. You need points. Edgewood's going to call a timeout. Wow, boy. Okay, so it looks like the Indians planning to go for this here. Now, as far as the field goal. It would be 31, 41. That'd be about a 48 yarder. Jackson can hit it. He's gonna be trying to hit it from that left hash. The wind is not as strong as it was earlier, but no. it's still blowing down there. Let's see what, what the wind is. Still says nine mile an hour winds, which is what it's been all night. It'll be right in his face. Twenty-eight seconds to go. We're tied at fourteen. Partner, I think they got to kick it here. You got to get points. Fourth and eight's a long, a long way to go. Unless you're going to try to draw them off sides to get closer, I think you got to kick it here. But they're not going. Nope. To. They are going to go for it. On a fourth and eight. Schmeizing the back. Nobody open downfield. Oh man. But he he going for it. He got the first down. He's got it. Ooh got the first down. What a play by Brady Ooh. The senior running back would not be denied. Wow. That's what I was going to say. He would not be denied. And that's a great spot. He at least got that by a, a, a yard. I don't know what we're looking at. That ball is right there. You might have to get the index card out, but Bill Neese just stepped over and says, I don't know why we're measuring this. That's a first down. I'm telling yep. you what, this Brady Ool kid is a playmaker. First down. First down Indians with 19 seconds to go. Got to get a play call here. Now, how many timeouts do the Indians I think have? They've got one or two. The scoreboard hasn't been yeah. updated. I know they at least got one. And I think the clock is going to start. No, he was out of bounds. The clock's going to run the snap. They give it to Smeezing. Smeezing. Diving. Tripped oh. up. Brick Barker got him by the ankle. Clock still running here, partner. They're going to take this all the way down. Brady's going to spike it. There he, he spikes, spikes it with four seconds to go. 
So the ball is on the 20. That'd be about a 37-yard field goal attempt. The officials are converging here. And I I'm believe there was five seconds on the clock when he spiked the ball. Wait a minute. Jackson Trombley is coming on. Brady's going to try to call a timeout. He's trying to call a timeout. This is to save the Indian season, or are we going to go to OT? I guess we're trying to figure out what's going on. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly why they have a big discussion going on down there right now. Now that was one of the weaker spikes that I have it seen. It was. And I don't know if that's the discussion right now. Yeah, they're giving Piqua a loss of down. They're saying it was an illegal forward pass. You're kidding. And a penalty is gonna bring it back five yards. That's gonna make this field goal attempt to win it a little bit longer for Jackson is now the ball's gonna be at the 26. Probably close to a 45 yarder. Yeah, so 36, uh, yeah, I'd say about a 42, 43 yarder. Jackson Trombley. We have talked about him so much the last two years. This is his moment. Yep. He will live in Piqua football infamy forever if he can make this field goal. If not, he is two of four on field goals this year. I think Edgewood might have another timeout too to yes. try to ice him. But if I was Pickle, I would snap the ball and kick it in either way. He's going to be kicking it from that right hash from the 34 yard line to make it a 44 yarder. Ooh. So we split the difference. For all the marbles and a trip to the playoffs next week. And there's the timeout. So we've got the timeout called by Edgewood here with three seconds to go. Winner. Jackson's gonna move it a little bit closer too. Make it a 43 yard. Jackson Trombley. He has He's another one of the guys that the Indians one year hence are gonna miss quite a bit. Yes. But right now, he's trying to extend this season yet another week. Neutral site next week for the winner of this game versus the winner of Anderson and Little Miami. I think we'll find out where the game is played on Sunday. Yes. Here we go. This is it. 43 yarder. For all the marbles. He missed it. No wide good. Wide left, or wide right. We go to overtime. The sideline thought he made it. Pick with sideline thought he made it, but we didn't. So wow. now we go to the extra period. That kick had the distance too, partner. That's just kind of deflating right there. And I know it is for Jackson who has meant so much to this team. He's gonna get another shot to do it. He really is. Okay. Bill so Meese is coming out to talk to these officials right now. 
So high school football, the overtime period. Same as college, right? I think they start, each team's gonna have a possession with the ball. They'll start from the 25 yard line. There's no game clock, it'll just all be play clock. I don't think high school football has brought the two-point conversion rule as an alternating two-point conversion after so many overtimes, but I do believe in high school still at the in the third overtime is when teams have to start going for two. So the two teams talking to their respective coaching staffs. This is the first overtime game in the history of Indian Nation Station calling games and people are watching it live all over the country. And this is first, I think it's the first uh, overtime game I've ever done. I think me too. And I've done a lot of football. Yeah. Now the biggest strategy here, because it's alternating possessions, is you want defense first. The NFL, you obviously want the offense on the field first because if you score a touchdown, the game's over. Which, which I, I hate that. Oh, I, I did too. But that's, that's another story. So it looks like Edgewood, Edgewood won it. Well, there's a bunch of confusion going on. Yeah. Edgewood's going to receive. Well, they will receive. They'll have the ball to 25. Yep. Pick was got. I think Pick will won the toss. So Pick was going to be our defense. All righty. Hold on to your hats. It's going to be a bumpy night. 14-14 after regulation here. Anderson winning 34 to 20 in the fourth quarter. Winton Woods is up against Ross 28 to 14 in the fourth quarter as well, but we're in overtime right now here, pal. So it's going to be the ball on the 20 yard line. And with the first opportunity here, Edgewood. Brown the quarterback. They give the ball. Sullivan. Valeri, I should say, they give it to Sullivan. Braden Sullivan with the ball. Takes it down there to the 12 yard line. And a nicer piece of sportsmanship as we saw one of the players there, number 72 for Edgewood, helped one of the Indians up. We've seen that a lot this year. Too. Yeah. No flag on an offsides. Yes. Crosby's keeping his feet just plowing. Crosby. His helmet came off too, and I think he's got to come out for a play. That's huge. Yep. Because this, th this is a big third down. So that's going to bring Clay Halsey into the game once again. Halsey came in when we saw the injury to Jake Valerio. But Valerio's been back out there. Ball at the 13 yard line. Big third down coming up. They'll give the ball once again, Sullivan. Sullivan. He's short, he's short. short. That brings up third down. That's fourth. This is fourth down. The scoreboard's wrong. This okay. is fourth down. If you look at the box, he's still got two yards to go. They got to get to the 10-yard okay. line. So yep. do we take the points here or try to take the points or pick the first down up? Crosby should be back in the game. And he's not. Yeah, he, yeah is. he is. He is. 
Yeah, they got three backs in there right now, as you would expect with that wing tee. And it's going to be a first down here for Edgewood. Trying to get Pickwood to jump off sides, no call. Still first and goal. These are going to be four big plays. That ball placed at the nine yard line. 14 14. Uh, the Indians. They've been tough defensively all night. Can they stop them once again here inside the 10 yard line? No. Crosby. Nine yard touchdown run. That's their first lead of the game. And they've also scored 20 unanswered points. Pickwood will have a chance to respond. Now, Rumpler comes out here, and I've mentioned several times tonight that he has missed a number of extra points this year. He's been perfect tonight. Yep. This is a big one. Flags all over the place. Full start, Donna. That's going to push you back five more. Tip leading 43 to six over Trotwood. They look like they're moving on. Oh yeah. So Rumpler's gonna have to put five more yards on this one. Huge extra points. So it's 21 to 14, now the Indians will have their chance at offense. And they've got their backs pretty much to the wall here. I think Pickwood's gotta put Sam Schmeezing out there, continue to do what they were doing on that last drive before uh, the end of regulation and just pound it. But they got Kai Warner out there. Got to score a touchdown or this game's over. And an extra point. Brady Ull getting those final instructions from the coach. Ryan Brown wide right, two wide left. On the pitch. Kyle Warner taken down for a two yard loss. Well, more than that. Paisley, number 21, getting in there. That's a six yard loss, a huge loss there for the Indians. So, a six yard loss. Bulls got him. Brown caught it, that's a touchdown! Brown oh, got it! Oh, he picked it off! He picked oh. it off! Oh! I really thought Ryan caught that ball. I did too. What a ball game. What a season. Final score, Edgewood 21, and the Pickwood Indians 14. Uh, I have no words. I really, really thought Ryan Brown caught that ball in the end zone. This was a great game played by Edgewood. Uh, 21 and answered points to beat Pickwa. Jackson's foot just wasn't able to get it through the uprights there at the end. I uh, have no words. I'm sure there will be a lot of soul searching by the team, but they they don't need to because, no. as you say, a great season. They lost an awful lot 
particularly offensively from a year ago. And to Undersized come up with on defense too. Yep. Eight and two, the regular season record, winning last week in the first round of the playoffs. To wind up nine and three, there is absolutely no shame in that. What a great season. What a great season. What a great game both of these teams played. Nobody has anything to hang their heads on on this one. Nobody. Well, the folks here saw a great game. The folks saw in the Indian Nation Station saw a great game. It wound up 21 to 14, and you've got the stats there. Edgewood ran a total of 50 plays for a 219 yards. That was a rush plays, I should say. Ended up passing the ball five times. They ended up being four or five for 52 yards. Brady Uhl, six of 12 for 125 yards. Offensive plays end up even and out, partner. 47 for the Indians, total yards of 247. Edgewood, 55 plays, 271 yards. Time of possession was even as well. Pickwell with the eight penalties, though, for 60 yards. That really hurt. Kai Warner, 21 carries for 61 yards and two touchdowns. Sam Schmeezing, nine carries for 33 yards. Jackson Tremblay ended up punting the ball four times this game for an average of 40 yards. Tavion Crosby, this boy's going to be a killer at the next level no matter where he goes. 30 attempts for 145 yards and two touchdowns. Again, 21-14 in overtime. Edgewood advances. And do you have the scoring there as well? Um, I just have the first score. Okay. Yep. All right. So we know the, the first two scores, uh, the two scores by the Indians, they came early on, and they were by uh, Kai Warner, who did a magnificent job once again here. And hang on a second, I got to get my my sheet back out here. Uh, keep it looking. does look like Edgewood is going to advance to play Anderson next week. Okay, so the scoring in this game, I finally found it on my sheet. Uh, Kai Warner, uh, he got one in uh, the first quarter. Uh, looks like uh, 403, an 11 yarder, uh, took the pitch. And then at 810 of the second, it was Warner on a three yarder. First scoring by the Edgewood team. That came with just 14 seconds to go in the first half. And that was a four-yard run by Crosby. And uh, Brick Barker caught a touchdown pass. And again, that uh, that's the one that tied the game up at 14-14. Um, and Crosby put it in in overtime to seal the yep. deal. So that'll put, put point on yet another Pickway Indian season as far as football is concerned here. Um, I know everybody's disappointed, but what a great time it was. What a great season, and um, I hope that the, the guys, when they reflect on it, will feel that way when they look back on it. Uh, don't forget, we've got uh, many more sports coming up for you here on the Indian Nation Station, including basketball, wrestling, swimming, bowling as well. Um, so looking forward to all that. But uh, final comments here, partner. It was a great game. None, none of these kids have anything to hang their heads on. Nobody should be blamed. These are high school kids, guys. You need to always remember that. You know, they went out here. They played a great game. They executed their game plan. They had a shot to win it in the end. We just couldn't pull it off. Great 9-3 and three season for these Indians. They'll come back next year with a fresh group. 22 seniors are going to graduate. Congratulations <laughs> to all of them on great seasons. They were back-to-back -back NVL champions as well. I just want to thank you again, Mr. Michaels, for calling our Pickway Indians football games and bringing everything to life there. I want to thank all the viewers at home for making this game the most watched sporting event uh, in the history of the Indian Nation Station as well. I also want to thank Stormy for all the work that he's done all season long for the station as well and all the Pickway Media students. Well, I'd like to thank you and Chip for allowing me to do these. Uh, I'd like to thank a uh, regular broadcast partner, 
of course, Brian Gillespie and uh, everybody else who is involved here with the program. Again, in overtime, the final score, Edgewood 21, Piqua 14. Edgewood now moves on and likely to play Anderson coming up next week at a neutral site for the Indians. That puts paid to the 2022 season. So for everybody involved here, my name is Tom Michaels. We thank you for joining us. You've been watching Indians football on the Indian Nation Station.